Do you think you being trans helped you win the show? The fans suck the beauty out of it a lot of times. You're seeing these queens build these huge empires off of the show that you were on. Mm -hmm. How does that make you feel? Miley brought a U-Haul over here with a ton of clothes. When they asked you to go back for season two, and you yeah. know you're transitioning, are you kind of like, do I want to go back to this place that like I don't feel necessarily welcomed, but I know it's going to be a huge platform for me? At that time, they were not casting trans people to be on the show. It's like, we're all born naked and the rest is drag. I'm like, I hear you. Now I want to see you put that into action. If you're going to be different in this world, you better learn to take a fucking punch and you better learn how to give one too. I wasn't walking into spaces telling people they needed to call me this or call me that or these are my pronouns. It was like, I earned my pronouns. I'm starstruck, first of all. Uh -oh. <laughs> oh my gosh, your place is amazing. Oh, <gasps> it is better at night. I see it because all the lights and stuff. I see what you mean. Yes, it's a lot right now. I'm still trying to clean up. It's, I've been traveling a lot, so. I know you're and busy. Right before I left, Miley brought a U-Haul over here, a U-Haul, and with a ton of clothes. So I've just been trying to. The Miley. <laughs> the Miley Cyrus. I was going to bring her up, but we already are bringing her up. Yeah. So are you really close with her? Yeah. So she's, I, she maybe she'll watch this episode. Maybe. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to be here and be talking with you. I actually went through my DMs with you and I had reached out to you back in October wanting to do this. And oh really? Yes, and it, we're here. I think I reached out to you and then I realized that you had reached out to me. I was like, wait a minute, this guy, who, let me see this person. And then I was like, oh, he actually reached out to me. Whoops. Well, I love your show, first of all. Really? Are you saying that? No, I'm not. I, I've seen so many episodes. Wow. Yeah. That is so crazy. Like, that's so amazing about YouTube is like, you just make things and you don't really think that people are watching them, you know? And then it's like, people say they are and it's shocking. Is this trampoline work? That's really not a clothes rack over there. What do you mean? I have turned this climbing machine into a clothes rack, but I can still <laughs> work out. Yes! It's like two in one. Making it work. Wait, you look so stylish. I'm jealous. I wish I was not stylish like you. Well, you can. I have I literally have everything, so we can we can put you in something real quick. If Wait, you want. really? Yeah. Oh my god, let's do it! I'm <laughs> excited. Okay. What do you What do you like? What do you What do you want to get? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Wait! Oh my god, I love it. I feel like this one's the winner, and this is like I feel like this is you. You know what it I mean? It is so weird. So this, oh my god. I literally wear that coat often. <laughs> Before we continue, I want to say a big thank you to Incogni for sponsoring today's episode. Being that I'm a creator, I am getting sent fake brand deals and spam mail every single day. I've been on a rampage lately trying to unsubscribe from all spam mail and just clearing my personal information from everywhere that I can. But, and this is news to me, our personal information is being sold online without us even realizing it. Every time I fill out a form or sign up for an account, there is always a possibility that data brokers are using that information to sell to advertisers. And it's scary to know that my social security number or my personal address or my financial information is just being sold online without me even realizing it. This is where Incogni comes in. Incogni is a service that you give permission to go out and remove you from all of these lists. Incogni truly makes the process so easy for me. And now that I have the service, I can rest easy knowing that Incogni's repeated removal requests will continue to keep my information secure. And the first 100 people to use code Matt Cullen at the link in the description will get 60% off. Thank you again to Incogni for sponsoring today's episode. And now let's get back to my conversation with Kylie. I only had two people on my show and it's been Eureka and Candy and now you and I'm just like so proud and happy of like the three queens that have had on my show because I love you three so much. Well, I think what you're gonna learn in this interview is that like I don't really consider myself a drag queen. You think that I'm a drag queen because that's how you know me but I want you to get to know me. I think sometimes I might get a little offended when when people think of me as a drag queen because for me my idea of what a drag queen is is not what a trans person is when i think of drag queen i think of somebody who is literally a male who is doing the art of female impersonation but i knew that when i went back to drag race i understand that it's a platform for drag queens i don't know i just don't like to consider myself a drag queen because um 
because I'm not. <laughs> I love it. One minute in, you're already educating me. I love it. I'm I guess, but you know what? I, I'm just speaking on my experience. I can't speak for anybody else, and I may change my mind tomorrow of how I feel, but today I consider myself a drag goddess. I think drag goddess is good for trans people. I That's mean, sexy. I think it's sexy, and it's like, there's no confusion. Are these your drag clothes or just your normal clothes? Um, no, this is some of the stuff that Miley um, had sent over to me. She's been like a dream guest of mine having my show. Like, Miley Cyrus um, would be like the epitome, um, you know what I mean? Like, she's just such an icon in our community and just like in music and the world in general. Yeah, no, she she really she really is. And and um, she just she wasn't just one of those artists that like put on a rainbow flag to look like they support. She actually is in the community and she's away. You audition and you're almost in season one, right? Yeah, I. they were scouting for the show and they sell me and they were like, we would like for you to audition for RuPaul's Drag Race. Um, and I did and I went through the whole process and I was an alternate for the show. And they said, well, if you don't get on this season, you'll definitely be on the next one. And I was like, okay, but I plan on transitioning. I was gonna ask that, so season one, you were still identifying as a male. I was in the early stages of starting my hormones and stuff like that, I already knew. I was like, well, if I get on this show, I'm not gonna be done, I'm not gonna be transitioned enough to be like, I'm a girl, you know what I mean? But I was letting them know, well, a year from now, I plan on transitioning. At that time, they were not casting trans people to be on the show, which, was unfortunate because there were so many fierce trans queens. I mean, the trans women ruled the drag world. When they asked you to go back for season two, and you yeah. know you're transitioning, are you kind of like, do I want to go back to this place that like I don't feel necessarily welcomed, but I know it's going to be a huge platform for me? And what, what does that look like for you? I just felt, let me go and do this. I haven't transitioned yet. My only thing was, though, that like, <clears throat> I knew that by the time it aired, I was going to be in a different place in my, like, in my head and in, in my body and, like, and then to have to see that again and that's my introduction to the world. When I see that, I see somebody who was putting on a front to do the show, you know, they wanted me to be a boy, so I went in and I, and I dressed like one. You know, and, and I just wasn't really being myself. When you went into season two, did you know that you were gonna come out as trans on the show? I actually talked about it during my interviews and stuff during my season, but obviously they didn't show it. I feel like that was probably one of the reasons why they got rid of me so quick on the show. Because they didn't know how to handle the whole topic. Well, because I topic. was talking about it. They brought it up during the reunion and I, was kind of caught off guard in a way. Do you feel safe to share something with the group? I've always been a girl. I've always been a girl trapped in a boy's body. I started doing drag, and there was just something about it that wasn't enough. And I, I went to a doctor, and he put me on testosterone blockers and then moved me to hormones, and my levels are even, and I've never been happier. I had very mixed emotions. Honestly, I felt super alone. Here I am, this boy trying to convince everybody that I really am a girl. Even even my own friends were like, they they were just like, yeah, right. You know, like, you're not gonna do it because I, I had to like play this like boy this whole time and I had to suppress like how I've felt my entire life. I've been doing a lot of electrolysis this past year because I had time off and if you know what electrolysis is, it literally, like it can take up to a week for you to do the process because you got to let hair grow and then you have to get zapped and then you have to let your skin heal. And with my line of work, you, you know, I may have a day off if I'm lucky two days off in a row and it's just like, so I've had, I have to actually take off from work mm -hmm. to have this done. And uh, it's just something that's part of my transition. Um, something that I've been insecure about for a really long time. It's almost crippling. Sometimes I don't even want to like mm -hmm. uh, leave the house. Um, it's made me super depressed. It made me have like really 
um, you know, dark thoughts. And when it comes to trans people, it's not just so much about, you know, getting breast implants or whatever. Sometimes it's, it's as uh, simple as, or not simple, but it comes down to like just like removing hair that you don't want there. What I find so fascinating too about your trajectory in Drag Race is season two, you're on it. Mm -hmm. And at season two, there wasn't the fan base that started developing in season five, season six. So when you're sitting there and you're watching season five and season six and season seven happen and you're seeing these queens build these huge empires off of the show that you were on, mm -hmm. how does that make you feel? Uh, lucky in a lot of ways. I remember once upon a time I didn't feel as lucky. I was like, well, that really sucks because now the newer girls are getting more, you know, they have more budget or whatever. But now looking back at it, it would have probably been really tough because we are all fairly new queens. Fierce enough to like have a, a booking somewhere where we get paid, but m maybe not fierce enough to be the drag queen of the world or whatever. Mm -hmm. But getting there. I used to look at it the other way, but now I, I think it's kind of a blessing in disguise. <laughs> She was telling me about how she went to DragCon with you season two. You went to your booth and there was nobody there. So you guys were like, let's just go get lunch or something like, and it's just wild to think about because now in your career, you could probably we couldn't walk down the street without getting recognized. Yeah, no, the, the first um, year of DragCon, me and Eden went together and we had like little autograph booths or whatever. And I think they were on season seven at that time. I think maybe like two or three people came to meet me or whatever. And it was like really depressing. And I felt like, well, it really sucks to be a part of this show. They don't even know me. There's probably no more than five minutes of maybe, if I'm lucky, there's about five minutes of me on the entire season of season two if I'm lucky. There was nobody <laughs> in the line. It, we were already on season seven and, and we'd already seen Bianca Del Rio and Laganja and Adora and Courtney Act and and Raja Gemini and Manila. You know, there'd already be Sharon Needles, like all these like amazing queens we had already been seeing and the show is like this bigger thing now. So I just, it I did feel really odd going to drag race things like that. I just always had this feeling that I was going to win drag race at some point, even though I went home fourth on season two and I would see, you know, people that went on the show and maybe they didn't get the outcome they wanted and they were really bitter and they were very vocal publicly um, and bashing the show or the producers and stuff like that. And I just always knew that, um, I was going to come back whenever I seen the first All Stars. I'm like, I think that's what it's going to be. And then they never asked me, you know, for a while. And then they asked me to do the Christmas special. And I was like, okay, this may be the All Stars for me. So let me go and like fucking really give it my all. You killed it. And, uh, and really just show them who I am and show them why trans people can do this too. And, and, make the show just as fabulous. When you hear everything that RuPaul says, we're all born naked and the rest is drag, I'm like, I hear you. Now I wanna see you put that into action. For me, for All Stars, the moment you came on the screen, it, it was just like, you have a star quality to yourself that like, so, someone can't buy or train. Like someone can come into the best outfits or the best dancing, but you have like that thing that makes you different and that thing that like, just makes you pop on screen. So it was no question on mind that you won. But I do remember there being some backlash from fans about you winning, right? I mean, everybody has opinion about who they think should, who their favorite one is. And I mean, even me watching it myself, like I appreciate you saying that I, you saw like I had like the star quality and everything like that. And I just think that that, a lot of that comes from like all those years thinking, God, like if I had a chance to come back, like I would not take any moment for granted and I'm going to allow myself to be present and just fucking give it my all every second, 
the fans they they really suck the beauty out of it a lot of times do you think you being trans helped you win the show i think me being myself really had a lot to do with it i don't think me being trans had anything to do with it i didn't really like talking about me being trans honestly because i just wanted to go and do drag and i think it's very important that we see trans people on tv doing what they're good at doing um because a lot of trans people are really fucking fierce and they need to be seen completely and you did that so impressed i did do that the first time i ever seen a trans person on tv was um probably like jerry springer or something like that and i was so confused as to why these beautiful women would uh tell people that they were a man oh is that what i'm gonna have to do like if i wanted to like live my life and i was like how do they do that like what's happened do you do they just grow boobs were they lucky and they just went through puberty that way you know i i wasn't sure how that any of that would happen when you decided that you wanted to transition who how did your family handle that well initially i told my mom first because she was the only one that i cared what she thought and when she was okay with it i was like i don't care what anyone else thinks because she was the only one i cared about anyway are you okay to talk about your dad yeah i don't talk to him the last time i saw my dad was at my sister's wedding it was um basically last time my family ever seen me as you know as a boy i tried to reach out and he didn't reach back out and I think what happened is my older brother and my older sister, they like to tell everybody's business. I think they went and told my dad what was going on with me, but they don't know what's going on with me. And they don't know how to tell him that. They never asked me the questions. They never seem interested enough. If my dad is getting information about me and how I'm living my life through them, then he's getting the wrong information. He's missing out on me. Do you think he's watched the show? I don't know. And I honestly don't care. And it sucks sometimes to say that, but I'm like, wow, it's got to the point where like, I really don't care. Like who sees it, who supports me or whatever. I hope he sees it. Maybe he can get to be in a little bit less scared to see me. I'm like, do you understand like how many people really fucking love me? that I've transitioned and I'm more of myself than ever. He don't get to say that I am who I am because of him. My brother and my dad were my first bullies. So I was constantly picked on and beat up and abused. And and my stepmom as well would do that as well. She, she tried to drown me. I remember I was super young. And then another time she tried to drug me when I was in the seventh grade. Is she still with your dad? She's dead now yeah if you're gonna be different in this world you better learn to take a fucking punch and you better learn how to give one too that's a piece of advice that i can give to the newer generation that get upset because somebody didn't use the right pronouns or somebody called them a name or whatever is if you get punched in the face one good time i promise you you're not gonna care about a stupid little word how do you feel about the new trans movement with you know all 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 of the non-binary and everything falling into the trans umbrella how do you feel about all of that i don't really think it's a movement because movement means somebody's actually physically doing something i just hear a bunch of people talking and wanting everybody else to do the movements and changing i can't think of any trans people who ever had an issue with going into the bathroom that they identified with because we knew that we could only go into those spaces if we looked like we should be in those spaces. Even for me, when I was transitioning, I was going through my transition silently until I wasn't trying to look like a female, but I was getting mistaken as a female. I wasn't walking into spaces telling people they needed to call me this or call me that or these are my pronouns. It was like, bitch, I earned my pronouns. That's what I'm wondering is like, 
trans women don't really like the whole asking pronouns thing because you've worked so anybody likes that unless you are somebody who's still kind of living in that gray area the world does not make sure that you're okay when you wake up in the morning that's your responsibility just because i am a trans woman i don't i don't feel entitled to all women's spaces you know i don't go to a ogbyn i don't need to you know, I, I, I know my place as a trans woman. I think a lot of times now people want all this gratitude for having the courage to come out. And, and there's so much more to it than that. That's like the scariest part. But after the scary part comes the hard work. And sometimes people just want the pat on the back for coming out, but aren't willing to put in the work i appreciate your honesty it's a it's a very scary subject to breach and i love your confidence about it and your willingness to be honest i'm only speaking through my experiences it's up to us to make a good impression of who we are now some people fuck up and they try to blame it on everybody just like everybody's group if one person messes up it makes us all look bad it does so we have to make sure that we're palatable, you know? I have learned so much from you tonight and you're just so full of wisdom and you just have such a calm confidence about you that it's just so admirable. I'm really grateful that you that you do your show and I'm a big fan of the show and I and I love that you just let people talk and and show you who they are. I think it's really beautiful. Ultimately, I think we just really want to be happy and content. I feel like that too. I feel like what I've learned most from my show is that we can all come from very different backgrounds or have very different experiences in our life. But at the end of the day, I think we all are just wanting to be the happiest that we can be and to get through another day and to experience love and to have a roof over our heads. And there's so much similarities that we all have. I just love being in your aura. Like it truly is so special. Thank you so much. Oh, thanks. I appreciate that. I'm really bad at um, compliments. I tend to like want to just go run and hide anytime anyone has anything nice to say about me. You're gorgeous. Me. You're perfect. I love your aura. Yeah, You're it amazing. Makes, it makes me want to go run and hide. No. But I do appreciate it. I'm just like, okay, just leave the compliment on the desk and, and run. You know, like, that's how I that's how I am. But I, I really do appreciate it. And that does make me feel really good. Can I get a hug? Oh, Thank you. Perfect. You're so sweet. This is fun. And, um, should we take a hit of your bong? We should. Yeah? It's time. Okay, okay. The, the other one is wearing off. Okay, let's do it. <laughs>